Welcome back and it's now time to go in depth. Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley is in Jamaica for his first official visit as leader of the Twin Island Republic. He has been hosted by his Jamaican counterpart Andrew Holness. The two regional leaders are expected to hold bilateral talks on a range of topics high on the agenda immigration and trade. Dr. Rowley will also meet with members of the business community including Trinidadian entrepreneurs on the island, the private sector and the opposition. So what is expected? from these talks. To help us discuss the matter, we are joined by senior counsel and columnist from Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Martin Daly, and Richard Dickey Crawford, political analyst in Jamaica. Thanks for joining us, gentlemen. Thank okay, good afternoon, good evening. Good everyone. evening, thank you for inviting me. Okay, let's begin with you, Mr. Crawford. It was Jamaica's Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, who extended the invitation to Dr. Rowley. And we are aware as Jamaicans that the need for further dialogue resulted from increased reports of Jamaicans being denied entry into Trinidad. Now, as it relates to free movement of travel, what sort of consensus do you want these talks to address? Well, the, the problem, as you rightly said, it has been going on for some time, where Jamaicans feel that they have been treated very badly when they visit the, the Republic of Trinidad. Um, on the other hand, I just watched the Prime Minister of Trinidad declaring very nicely that many Jamaicans who come there have broken the rules, even been guilty of criminal offenses, and consequently, from the Trinidadian side, that's the reason why they have probably taken a very stern um, look at the immigration from Jamaica. Um, there's only one way, to, I think, to solve that problem. It would be that we have to, as long as they're not oppressive or anything like that, we would have to abide by the rules. Each country, Trinidadians would have to abide by the rules of Jamaica, and Jamaicans would have to abide by the rules in Trinidad that are set there. And I suppose there's a framework for the whole CARICOM region that also covers that. So that, that is one of the main things that has been addressed. The other real problem has been what the Jamaican private sector sees as the unfair terms of trade between Trinidad and Jamaica. And uh, the leader of the private sector organization of Jamaica, you might remember, even called for a boycott the other day on the, as a result of that. So those are the two major things to look at and to be resolved. But I have another reason that I think that they must um, look at really. It really is a question of whether we want CARICOM or we don't want CARICOM. Um, for years now, we have been toying with this view. Um, Sonny Ramphal and his team did a massive study across the Caribbean entitled Time for Action. And the reason why they call it Time for Action is because Caribbean people just talk and talk and talk. Okay. That was in ninth. And it just continues that way. So let's make up our minds what we want. Okay, let's, let's bring in Mr. Daly. Mr. Daly, how does Trinidad and Tobago view this visit to Jamaica? Do, do citizens, including the opposition, believe that this is an essential trip? Oh, absolutely. I think for far too long, Trinidad and Jamaica have been, you know, one looking in the south, one looking in the north, not really communicating. It's unfortunate that these episodes in our airport have been the catalyst for the meeting, but maybe some good can come out of it. I, I think Mr. Crawford is absolutely right that at the end of the day, despite our feelings about freedom of movement and so on, the immigration authorities in each country are going to insist on retaining a residual discretion. What I'm hoping will, one, one of the things I'm hoping will come out of this is that at least each side, namely Trinidad and Jamaica, could perhaps sketch out in a little more detail um, so that there can be a public education program in each nation as to what are the areas that tend to provoke the discretion of the immigration against the person seeking to enter. I think there's a room for a lot of clarification there. I accept that 
a certain amount of reading of body language and so on has to go on with immigration people. But I think no harm would come in trying to spell out as best we can what are the areas, you know, where the discretion tends to be exercised negatively. We, we can't much go on like this, and I, I've seen um, part of the visit of Dr. Rowley with Mr. Holness, and the body language seems very positive. So I, I think this is long overdue, and it, it represents a great opportunity for Trinidad and Jamaica to try and find some common working ground. Now, trade, as Mr. Crawford mentioned earlier, is another crucial topic that we expect both leaders to discuss during the official visit of Dr. Rowley. I remember in May, the Finance Minister of Jamaica, Audley Shaw, bemoaned the trade imbalance that exists between the two countries. Um, Mr. Crawford, what sort of solutions should both leaders arrive at as it relates to trade? Because in a nutshell, Trinidad and Jamaica are two of the largest countries in, in CARICOM. Do we have our guests? Actually, because first and foremost, um, Trinidad has significant holdings, for example, investments in Jamaica, and essentially a, a significant proportion of the goods processed foods, everything that's sold in Jamaica comes from Trinidad. So our businessmen are, are sort of very agitated or, or feeling the pinch of that. I don't know if, of course, Trinidad, as has been mentioned, we don't know for sure, and I suppose that would have to be covered in the talks. If Trinidad is playing straight by the rules, that's a different thing. If they are breaking the rules and getting unfair advantage, then clearly that's a case for Jamaica to have to ask Trinidad to correct that issue. But if another factor that hurts Jamaica is that Trinidad some time ago took the pains to restructure its economy. And from that restructuring exercise has become a far more productive country, whereas Jamaica has lagged behind. At one stage, I remember my Trinidadian friends were saying, boy, I wish I was like Jamaica. But they have passed us out now because we have tarried along the way. And, and that's part of the difficulty. The Jamaican economy is not, is not strong enough, one. And secondly, um, I, I do believe that the Trinidadians have developed a more aggressive and a more outward-looking aspect towards business, whereas we have tended to contend ourselves with importation, the Trinidadians are exporting and earning money from exports. Mr. Crawford, let's bring, bring in Mr. Daly again. Um, what sort of alliances or, or agreements should both leaders sign or agree to and adhere to in terms of building trade? But I think this is a much more difficult question because I, what I gather is that the, 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 the manufacturing and other sectors in Jamaica are concerned about the fact that the competition in Trinidad benefits from fuel and utility subsidies. And that, that is a very, very pro difficult problem to solve. Um, I mean, to be fair, um, I don't know that the subsidies in Trinidad have been designed to make Trinidad more competitive. I think it was right or wrong, the successive governments thought it was a way of making sure that everybody benefited from the fact that we had oil and gas. So that's why it's such a difficult problem. Um, I'm not an expert in trade, but I'm hoping that we can find some way in which there are, there, there are goods in Jamaica in which we can you know, facilitate the, the entry on a competitive basis more easily. But the, the real problem is a fuel subsidy, and it's very difficult for Trinidad to you know, reduce or do away with the fuel subsidy at short notice because it's so deeply embedded in all aspects of life in the country, including, of course, um, you know, taxi transport and so on. So it's a much more difficult problem. And I think the experts are really going to have to do some really creative thinking to find a way to create the imbalance as Jamaica sees it. Daly and Mr. Crawford, I'm so sorry we are out of time. Very interesting okay. discussion, but... I guess we'll get back to it another time. Thanks so much, okay. gentlemen. Thank you, too.